So last time we saw the rush of Mahakopalini in various centers of Savitri's sacral body from about top, from above the head, from above the crown, down the base of the Kundalini. And then there was also the response from below as if to greet the rush of that Mahakundalini. So Savitri is at once showing the strength which is there in her and the mighty mother who is behind her. We thank the beauty is the darkness saw God's living reality. What until now was not visible to darkness, that became visible to Him. That behind Him also there is a great reality, a dynamic reality, a breathing reality. He is as if an instrument of that living reality. So with the rush of the transformation of Savitri, the reality of darkness itself becomes prominent, comes out fully. And with that, then Savitri addresses this death. She says, I hate thee, Almighty, and we told his death. Yes, we have fought the battle very well. We have won the victory. In what sense? We have won the victory. In what sense? That it has become possible for me to reveal myself fully. In my strength and also the one who is standing behind me. Both of them are now come in front of you. And that is your victory. Which is not that earlier at all. That is your victory. I hail thee, Almighty, and victorious death. Thou grandiose darkness of the infinite. That is a great qualification, attribute, compliment to death. That is the grandeur, darkness of the infinite. In other words, the infinite has taken this particular form of darkness for a certain purpose and you are playing your role very well. I applaud it. I admire it. I hail you for the role which you are playing. A difficult role, something which is unbearable, something for which nobody is willing, nobody can come forward to play that kind of a role and here you are coming forward and doing that. I hail thee, Almighty and victorious that thou and your darkness of the infinite, O oh boy, that makes the room for all to be. It is because of you that the boy can offer his spaces for things to happen here. It is because of you that the new creation can become possible. What was void that has now given rise to something which was impossible otherwise and is because of you. Therefore, I hail you. I welcome you. Yes, you have done a wonderful job. Oh, boy, that makes room for all to be. Hunger, that noise at the universe. You are the one swallowing everything. And it is because of that things can happen. Oh, hunger, that noise at the universe, consuming cold revenant to the suns and its 
the whole world with thy jaws of fire. Your great form, terrible form, frightening form, it is that it can consume everything. It must be something absolutely remarkable that you are in a position, you are able to do the thing, you are capable of swallowing the entire creation. It is not something which is possible for any common, ordinary creature. You are somebody who is exceptional, who is playing his role in the scheme of things and therefore I will tell you, consuming the coal remnant to the sun and cars and eats the whole world with a jaws of fire. Waste of the energy that has made the stars. In conscience, carrier of the seeds of thought. That is the greatness of yours. You are able to swallow everything. And therefore things have become possible. That is the mystery. And you are playing the role of mystery, actually. Now in conscience, the carrier of the seeds of all. The mystery of inconscience is something because it's a mystery inexplicable. But it is also a way of grasping or understanding or appreciating what that inconscience is what it is for, what is the purpose it is playing. See, after all, it is the inconscience which has become so because of the consciousness. It is the being who has become non-me. It is consciousness who has become inconscious. In other words, behind non-being and inconscience are present already being and consciousness, Sat and Chit. They are already founded in this, in the inconscience and in the non-being, in non-existence, in the void. They are already present there. In other words, they have become the seeds of possibilities. The non-being and inconscience have become the seeds of consciousness and being. To give rise something out of them that a creation might arise. So, you have to see all those possibilities. The possibilities are present in the void, in the inconscience, and you are promoting them. So, in other words, what is in conscience after all? It is the self-absorption of consciousness itself. It has withdrawn everything within. But who has withdrawn? Consciousness itself. Behind that self-absorption is present already consciousness. And because the consciousness is present behind the inconscience, a new opening has become possible. Actually, the purpose of this creation is to bring out an evolutionary manifestation. Cessation of evolution is not the purpose. In other words, when Savitri is hailing death, yes, you are required, you are there, you are mute in the happening. It means that it is not the question of removing the inconscience. Because removing the inconscience would mean the cessation of evolution. That is not the purpose. Everything is present in the inconscience and from that everything should appear. What should what happen with the victory is not the cessation 
of inconscience. But the possibility, the potentiality which are present in the inconscience, they will emerge. In fact, the question will arise whether after the supramental manifestation, evolution will cease to be, will stop. Will evolution stop after the supramental manifestation? Until now, things have progressed in an evolutionary manner from matter to life, from life to mind, from life to supermind. These things are constantly happening, are going, and there will be inevitability, inevitability of the supramental present and manifestation. That is bound to happen. Now, does it mean then that the inconscience will, will be no more there? Or does it mean that the evolution will cease to be? Will it get exhausted and there is no further progress? No, that is not the meaning. The meaning is the evolution which is presently going on in ignorance from less knowledge to more knowledge, to greater knowledge. We step into the domain of from knowledge to knowledge. It will keep on going in the domain of knowledge itself. So evolution will not cease in that sense. But then, where is the inconscience? On the supermind has descended, then where is the inconscience? The inconscience still will be present in the sense that all its possibilities now will emerge because of the presence of supermind and we will participate in the progress, in the manifestation of the supermind itself. So it is not going to be over in that sense. See, it is no more the evolution in ignorance. It is an evolution which God transformed into an evolution in the world of knowledge, in the realm of knowledge. In conscience, in self-absorption, that is the basis for the possibility which are present in the self-absorbed being to emerge. And it is those possibilities which come out with the supermind being a part of the further manifestation here. Actually, who is death? That is the bigger question. Death is, as we have already seen, the face of the Supreme Himself, a form of the Supreme Himself taken for a certain purpose. Behind the death, who is standing in front of Savitri? in the Supreme Himself present. And then that form of the Supreme is seen behind Him, then it is a different world altogether. And that is what is happening now in the case of Savitri. This is what she is seeing here. In fact, in the Veda, death has a very high place, Yama. He is not the Yama or the kind of a denial here. He is the ordainer of the world who opposes the law of the creation. He is the son himself, Vivaswarana. Now the names of Yama is Vivaswarana, who is not nobody, who is but another name of son, Surya. So, it is that form which has taken a certain points here for a certain purpose. And it is that now which is being, being transformed back to his form of Vivaswarana. And it is he whom Savitri is going to meet. Actually, Vivaswarana 
be the Lord of Swara, of Kuna. And it is in that Kuna, in that Lord, in that, in that house of Yama, of Kuvasmana, where Savitri meets the fourfold being and see the real aspect of this Yama standing behind the whole creation. So, we are here, a kind of a quick description for this whole process here. In conscience, carrier the series of thought, nations in which all knowledge slips and to and slowly emerges in its hollow breast, slowly, that is the process of evolution, slowly emerges in its hollow breast, wearing the mind's mask of bright ignorance. You are putting on a mask for a certain purpose. Thou art my shadow. and my instrument. You have taken this form for a certain purpose. Who are you after all? My shadow. When I am standing in the sunlight, it is my shadow which is there on the ground. It is the same manner, I am the sun and you are the shadow of my own self in this process here. Thou art my shadow and my instrument. I have given thee Thy awful shape of dread, this fearful form, Bayan Rupa, it is I who have given to you. I have given to thee thy awful shape of dread, and thy heart, and thy sharp sword of terror, and grief and pain, and thy sharp sword of terror, and grief and pain, they are coming from me. To throw the soul, for what purpose? To throw the soul of man to struggle for life. On the brevity of his half conscious days. He is in ignorance, he is struggling, and it is you who are promoting his progress under these conditions. Thou art his spur to greatness in his works. The way to his yearning for eternal bliss, his poignant need of immortality. Through death, it begins for him to become immortal. You have become the instrument for that purpose. Live, therefore, be there still. Live, death, abide. I still need you for this purpose. Leave that, don't disappear. You be this. Leave that alive. Be still my instrument. Do my work. It is a terrible work. It is a work which will be not accepted by anybody easily. You are doing it. Be my instrument. And I am there with you in that sense. I think we stop with that.